Hey yeah, what's up guys, Matt here. It's 2014 and by now we're pretty much used to big phones, but the one that started it all was the Samsung Galaxy Note lineup. It seemed crazy at the time to have such a massive phone, but now things are different and everyone seems to be doing it. But how is Samsung's latest version? This is my review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. So right off the bat, it doesn't seem like a whole lot has changed, and that's because it's true. This is really an iteration on the Note 3, and it takes what it did great and makes it even better, and in some cases does what the Note 3 didn't do so great and updates that as well. The first thing you'll notice when you pick up the phone is that the edges are made out of metal. Yes, finally Samsung did it, they included metal on their phones, and I have to say it really adds to the premium feel Samsung wants this phone to have. It has chamfered edges on pretty much every edge there could possibly be, and it really looks a lot more premium than it did before. The next thing you'll notice is the screen. At first it doesn't seem all that different, it's still a 5.7 inch Super AMOLED panel, but now it's rocking a resolution of 2560 by 1440 so yeah, this thing is awesome. You won't see pixels, with 515 pixels per inch it really is not going to happen, and even though the colors are still really vibrant and inaccurate for the most part right out of the box, the screen totally pops and is really pleasant to look at. And of course, because this is an AMOLED panel, the contrast is absolutely crazy, and overall this is just an excellent screen, probably the only AMOLED LED screen I'm really happy with right now. Below that screen, you'll see the physical home button that also acts as a fingerprint sensor. And this is improved over the one on the Galaxy S5, but really it's still hit or miss when you use it. And because of that, for the most part, I just left it off. It just really wasn't all that reliable. Samsung also really wants to keep the capacitive back and app switcher buttons for some reason, which is fine, but I constantly found myself hitting them by accident, which was really annoying, and when they're on screen, I really don't have that issue. I really wish it would just switch to the on screen buttons, but they haven't. Around back we have another one of Samsung's main features which is the removable back. So this is made out of plastic and has a faux leather look to it. It looks a lot nicer than the fake stitching that was on the Note 3 and it has a really nice feel to it. And of course it's removable so that allows you to remove the battery and you can also add a micro SD card for more storage. On back we also have the heart rate monitor which works well and above that we have the camera system. This is a 16 megapixel shooter with optical image stabilization and overall it's a great camera. As far as the software goes, Samsung really toned down the user interface to make taking pictures the focus and then adding some cool features in secondary, instead of having the camera all cluttered with a million different things you can do. But as far as actual photo quality goes, I have to say this camera is pretty great. The colors are relatively accurate and there's plenty of detail with that 16 megapixel sensor and everything is nice and sharp, but that's actually one of the gripes I have here. Samsung's processing really isn't all that great. They seem to sharpen everything a little bit too much, so every image has artifacting if you zoom in a little bit. You can really notice this in low light shots, there's just a ton of processing going on here that really doesn't feel like it has to be done. Samsung really just wants there to be a clean image, but the processing kind of goes a little too far. As far as video, the camera shoots 4K, which looks great. My only real complaint here, and it's kind of a small one, is that the optical image stabilization works, but can have a warping effect if you move it a little bit too much, but that's really my only complaint. The video is sharp and looks really nice in pretty much every situation I shot in, and it was really nice to shoot with. This phone is running Android 4.4.4 KitKat, and of course, it has TouchWiz on top of that. And if you've used TouchWiz before, it's pretty much the same thing here. The performance overall is really good, but there really is some unnecessary stuttering and lag here and there. The phone has plenty of power to run pretty much anything, but there's still delay sometimes. The most obvious is when you go into the multitasking carousel, it always takes a second to activate, and then once you're in there and choose an app, it takes another second to actually get you back into that app, and this happens almost every single time. So TouchWiz definitely needs some work, but compared to what it used to be, it definitely has improved. TouchWiz does come with some neat stuff. One of the main features in the Note lineup is the S Pen, which is their stylus. So you can write notes or make little drawings through a few of Samsung's apps, and although the S Pen isn't something I used every day, it's nice that it's there, especially for people who like that tactile feel of a pen. There's also improved multitasking. The Note 4's 5.7 inch screen has plenty of real estate, and Samsung wants you to use it to its fullest extent. So they've upgraded from the standard two window mode of multitasking to an even more powerful way that works through these little app bubbles that allow you to shrink and move around certain apps. Now this doesn't work with every app on your phone, but it does with the main ones. It works pretty well, but if you get a little carried away and try to open more than two or three, the phone kind of gives up on you. But overall, it's nice to see that Samsung is trying to make this phone as productive as possible. And being that they want you to use this phone to its fullest extent, the battery life better be great to let you do so, and for the most part it is. 
The 3220 milliamp hour battery was great, but I feel that the 2K screen did hinder it a little bit because it's not quite as amazing as what I got on the Note 3, but really you never have to worry about the battery on this and if you do, you can remove it and add a new one, one of the great things about the Note. So overall this phone is a really great improvement over the Note 3. As a whole package, it isn't too much different, but when you dive deeper, you really notice that every part of this phone has been changed in some way, and for the most part, it has all been improved. I have to say that this is the first Samsung phone that I would have no issue using every day. There's no glaring issues, and overall, it's just a really solid phone. So if you're looking for a big phone that has every single feature you could possibly want, then this is the place to look first. So that's my review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to see when my new videos are up. Like I said, my name is Matt, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya!